Hello YouTube. Okay, this video is going to be a field strip and cleaning of a 1911 style pistol. This one's M45. It happens to be the American Tactical. So this is pretty much going to cover any 1911 style, whether it's commander model, government model. It's going to be very similar, if not exactly. So let's get started. Always do a safety check. Make sure it's unloaded. Everything looks clean. Not clean, but clear. All right, items we're gonna need. Of course, you gotta have a pistol. Set that to the side. You're gonna need some oil of your choice. We've got two types here. Some type of cleaning solvent. You'll need a cleaning rod, toothbrush. I like to have a little flathead screwdriver around just in case. Toothpick is always helpful for getting in those little tight spots and crevices. Q-tips go a long ways. These are actually, that's a standard Q-tip and we have some baby Q-tips. Those work very well, especially for larger caliber pistols or larger frame pistols. You'll need a patch attachment, whatever that thing's called. And then you'll need a brush some cleaning patches, and I always like to have a few cut up t-shirts. They work very well, and they're free. So, after you use a t-shirt up, you just cut these up and they work great. All right, so let's break this uh, puppy down and let you see how easy it actually is. It's not that difficult. Um, once you do it two or three times, you're gonna become a master at it. So I'm trying to work around the camera here, so hope I don't bump the camera. But we'll see how it goes. All right. <clears throat> so like I said before, always make sure you're clear and there's nothing in the chamber. We have no mag. We'll double check one more time just to make sure we are clear. All right. What I like to do is go ahead and slide it, pull the hammer back. I'll put the safety lock on. And then what we want to do is we want to turn up muzzle. Take a look at the muzzle. And this is our little plunger right here, and this is our barrel bushing. So we're actually going to relief this first, and then after that, we'll slide the, the bushing out, and then from there, we're gonna take the slide off, and how we take the slide off is gonna be, we're gonna push this out, and we'll do that from the opposite side here. You'll see the other end right there. All right, so let's get started. All right, so just turn it up, muzzle up, and you wanna mash down on that plunger, and that plunger will go below that barrel bushing, just like that. So if you push it, uh-oh, I gotta bump the camera, and turn that barrel bushing, if it kinda hurts, you can kinda let loose, and we've got that barrel bushing halfway, so that's holding it. Now we wanna turn this counterclockwise, and what that's gonna do <clears throat> is that's gonna allow us to pull that little plunger out and the barrel bushing not come off. So it's actually gonna stay on there. So if we turned it counterclockwise, we'd remove the barrel bushing, and we don't wanna do that because there's a little notch there that's gonna get in the way. And I'll show you that in a second. <clears throat> so there's, of course, this is spring. This is a spring here, so it's got tension on it, so you wanna make sure you keep your thumb right there. And of course, when you're doing it at home, you'll probably have this pistol straight up like that. So we're gonna mash down, turn that bushing, and let that spring just come right up, relieve that tension. So we'll go through that one more time. We'll push it down. And new ones, this is a fairly new pistol. A little tough to do sometimes. They do make a little wrench that you can put on there and it actually pushes that bushing down when you mash it and turn it at the same time. Makes it a little bit easier, but why buy a tool when you got everything you need right here? Your hands. Ten best tools you'll ever own. All right, push down. Twist it. There we go, we're halfway, so we're holding that plunger so we can kind of re-grasp that, that plunger and hold that tension and just let that slide right out. All right, from there, you can actually leave that spring in there. Let's just pull that bushing off. Not bushing, but a plunger. And then from here, <coughs> excuse me, 
There's a little notch right here. This is an indicator notch. You'll see it kind of looks like a half moon right there. And then this is what stops the slide back. So what we want to do is we want to slide this back, take the slide, slide it back, until this notch is right above, right here, the catch, the, ca the slide catch. Now to do that, we're going to take the safety back off, leave the hammer in the cock position, take and slide that back until we line up just right over there on that indicator, that little half moon. And you can see that half moon right there. We don't want to go to the slide stop. We want to go right here. And from here, this is where I'll turn the pistol upside down. And that's the point we want to push out. Take it and push it. And then grasp your little slide stop there, the lever, and pull that right out. Set that to the side. <clears throat> And I'll keep the pistol upside down, and I'll slide the slide right off the frame, just like so. There's our frame. Okay. We slide our barrel back to where it hits the locking lugs. And we can pull the spring out of the front, set it to the side. Some are directional. This one happens to be basically the same on both ends. All right. Okay, and then from here, just put your finger right here, and this is the barrel link right here. Some that's worn out and old, that pan will slide out real easy, so watch that. So I just place my finger right there on the barrel, turn this back up, and I take that bushing, and I want to turn it counterclockwise, and you'll see a little, get the, the flashlight here. See if we can show you this. You see a little notch in there. See that notch right there? That's gonna line up right there and then take that plunger right out of the front. So there's that notch. You can see it better right there. I need some more light. See that notch right there? It lines up right in there, goes right over. It's a bushing for the barrel. Just slides right off. Okay. Now we want to take our barrel and we want to slide it right out of the front. See right there, we're just going to go straight out. Make sure that links forward. So this link needs to be forward right there. Then we're going to take and lift up a little bit. I usually use my pinky right here. And that's going to take it out of those the locking lugs. And just keep it straight. You might have to wiggle it a little bit because it's kind of a tight space right there. Pull it right out of the front. Now you got your barrel out. So you can see that's been used quite a bit to be a new pistol. I think it's got about four or 500 rounds to it, but we're going to clean her up and make her look nice. Okay, the first thing I like to do is I like to brush that barrel out. Move some of this stuff out of the way. Let's get our cleaning rod. Brass brush. Let's get that barrel good and clean. Okay. Now this is where we'll take a patch. We'll run it down the barrel. I like to do that first. That way the barrel can be soaking. So that's the very first thing I put solvent on. You don't need a, a terrible lot of solvent. And I've been using this Hoppy's 9 for really my whole life. It smells the same, but it, I don't know. It just seems like it doesn't cut quite as well as it used to. So I'm on the hunt for a new solvent. I've placed an order for a new brand, and when it comes in, I'm going to give it a shot. So let's just run that patch. Do there a couple times. Make sure that chamber gets a lot on there. Okay. Pull my patch off. And I'm going to use this same patch. Just kind of swab that barrel. Look at that. Got the little smile on it. You can tell this one's been shot a little bit. 
The more you shoot it, the better this thing will operate. Get that muzzle real good. I tell you what, 1911s are workhorses, but man, that is a thin barrel for such a large caliber bullet coming out of it. It's amazing. Okay, we're just kind of wiping this. Just kind of get a little bit on it so that way it can start working. Okay, I'll set the barrel to the side. We're going to use this same patch because I'm kind of stingy. Going to wipe everything down. We'll do another final wiping later, but I just like to get some solvent on there. Let it start working on that carbon. It's not a whole lot needs to be cleaned on this, but I still like to wipe it down. And this is a quick and easy cleaning. You know, you may not want to do it this way with a safe queen. Of course, I don't own any safe queens. Everything I own are shooters. And this pistol happens to be a shooter. It's not mine, but it is a shooter. Let's kind of wipe this through. Take that same patch. Let's just run it through that bushing, just like so. Kind of wiggle it. Set it off to the side. Spring. I just kind of run through my fingers real quick. Get some solvent on it. Just make sure you don't catch that in like I just did. I was fixing to mention that too. All right, we'll put that to the side. Let's get our plunger. Wipe off some of that residue. Look how dirty that patch is now. Take it and kind of twist it right inside there. Not gonna be a whole lot in there, probably more oil than anything. We'll set that to the side. I think we've about done all we can do with that patch, so we'll just place it to the side. All right, let's get our slide here. Toothbrush works well on this. We're really gonna scrub this. We're gonna take our brush, kind of dip it a little bit. We don't need too awful much, but just a little bit, and we're gonna we're gonna scrub a little bit. Now this has an internal extractor right here, so we're just gonna kind of lightly brush that in the end and right back here. There's a lot of carbon right in there. And of course, we need to get the slides good and clean, the lugs, and the whole barrel um, channel itself. Good cleaning all around. So I like to start with the with our bearing surfaces. Get those good and clean. We want to kind of stay away as much as we can from the firing pin. We don't want to get a whole lot of gunk in there, so we're going to use kind of a, a damp portion of our t-shirt to get in there. This is not a full disassembly. This is just a field strip of cleaning. But I love using a toothbrush. Uh-oh, there you go. I bumped that camera. Okay. Smaller toothbrushes work best. Just kind of get in there and just kind of scrub a little bit. We're getting a little solvent on there, letting it do its trick. Get down here in these locking lugs. You can see it's good and grungy in there. We can really see a lot of carbon in there. So it's definitely time, but I believe that carbon probably helped out the break in process. And like I said, you don't want to get too much around that extractor. So be careful around it. All right, and then here, kind of brush lightly here. Get a little solvent on there. Not a whole lot. We don't want anything getting down in that firing pin. Getting a lot of built up. You know, we haven't fired enough off this to completely pull it down. All right, now from here, we got a little rust up here. We'll go ahead and brush good and hard on that rear side. Get rid of that rust and it just popped right off. Get down in the serrations of our slide. Usually a lot of oil and gunk accumulates right there. If you need a little more solvent, go ahead and get you some. 
and then we can get be a little bit more liberal when it comes to the exterior. Uh, yeah, technically we could just wipe this down, but this is a quick and easy cleaning. Let's get that front side post real good, and there's a little bit of rust piled up around it. And of course, on the face. Okay, we'll go ahead and rub inside again since we got plenty on our toothbrush. Okay, now we're gonna let that kind of soak right there. We usually stand it up. I'll stand it up like that out of the way. So if anything kind of got in that fire and pin hole right here, right there, that can kind of drain out. So I'll just sit it to the side just like that. And remember, we didn't touch anything back here. We're going to use a separate cloth for it. Kind of clean up real nice and neat right there. Put that in the background. Get my cut up t-shirt. We'll kind of wipe the counter a little bit. Okay. All right, the frame here, I mostly use a damp cloth for it. I don't really scrub a whole lot because I don't want a whole lot of, you know, solvents and stuff just running everywhere. But we got some pretty good gritty stuff on this, so we're just going to be careful around it and not let a whole lot run down. Okay, so I'm going to take my T-shirt. Kind of fold it over a couple times. Got a little bit of cleaner solvent on that. Move it around. Take and we're just kind of rub it in where that bearing surface is right there on both sides. See, it's fairly dirty, not too bad. And this is where a toothpick comes in handy. You can kind of open this up. You can grab that toothpick, kind of get it on there just like that, wrap it around, and you can use that to run down the inside right there. Now we could use a brush on this, but I probably would if it was my pistol and I was pulling the grips off and everything, but we're not going to do a crazy disassembly on someone else's pistol. We'll get some more in there in a minute. All right, here's your feed ramp right here. Just gonna wipe up on that a little bit. Solve it on it. And this is your ejector. So that's your ejector there. So when that slide comes back, that brass hits that ejector, and then your um, extractor's there. It's pulling on that case, and then it kicks it right out. Let's get a little bit more solvent on this T-shirt. Okay, get that ejector real good. We'll see a little bit of wear on the top there. So we want to make sure we put a little grease or a little oil right there. Get that good and clean. Okay, go down the top here. And you can wipe down on the inside of the frame too. Yeah, she's not even broke in yet, but she looks pretty good though. She's on her way. And these are great buys, by the way. I think you can you can pick these up for around three hundred and something dollars. Sometimes you can catch them on sale, and they're below three fifty. And for a nineteen eleven model, that's a great price. That's hard to beat. Of course, they are made in the Philippines, but hey, not everybody's got a $1,000 gun budget, right? And if I paid a $1,000 for a gun, I'd, man, that'd probably make me want to turn it into a safe queen. Okay, so we're looking pretty good. This pistol's fairly clean itself, so the rest of the frame, we're just going to wipe down with a uh, 
with a dry cloth and put a little oil on it and we'll be in good shape. Let's get on the back side good of that extractor. Make sure we don't have any dust build up right there. Get that ramp real good. Kind of down in there where the mag sits. A lot of powder builds up down in there. And of course the face of that extractor. Kind of wipe on it. Alright, so we're pretty much done wiping this frame down. So we'll set it to the side. All right, same rag. We're going to kind of wipe down on the mag. There's a lot of powder residue. We're not going to use full strength. Solvent portion on it. And we could disassemble this mag, but I don't think it's necessary. Not now. We'll wait till it gets about a thousand, two thousand rounds through it. and Then we'll strip her down and give her a good thorough clean. So that's good enough for right now. Gets all that residue off. Okay. Set the mag to the side. Okay, let's get this barrel back. So I want to run some more patches down through it. Get it good and wet. Make sure we get a good clean barrel. Then we're gonna kind of wipe everything down one more time. So we'll just take a clean patch, kind of dip it in solvent a little bit there. Give it a little spin. Forgot how much I poured in there. That's plenty on there. Not too much. Okay. Let's see, it should come out fairly dirty. I don't think this stuff cuts quite as well as it used to. And this pistol wasn't that bad. All right, now I'm gonna take my brush again. Dip it in there just a little bit. And I'm gonna brush right around here. Get in these little cracks and crevices. Get in the lugs right there. He may only have about three or four hundred rounds through this. Maybe two to three, maybe. I was thinking it was five hundred. I don't know, probably more than that. I think I shot about fifty through it one day. clean spot right there. Run that down in the chamber. You don't have to, but I'm particular about my chambers being clean. And I just spin it real good. Let's go light on that. Not bad. I'm gonna hit it with a brush one more time. Generally, I don't run my brush down after I've got solvent in there, but I wanna make sure this barrel's good and clean. I don't think he shot any lead through it. I think it's all been copper. real quick. Brushes are cheap. We can buy a new one if we need to. Let's see if that will help us cut some of that out. Now let's try a patch. There we go. That's what we're looking for. Need to hit it with a brush a little bit one more time. Get that chamber real good. Right, 
I'm gonna go ahead and run one more patch through it. Now it doesn't have to come out perfectly clean. Some people like that, but I don't waste a whole lot of time on a shooter. Now, of course, this is not long-term storage cleaning. This is, hey, I'm gonna clean this, give it a little service, and then we're putting it back in service. So we're, that means we're gonna take it back out and we're gonna shoot it. Didn't get that patch quite wet enough. Let's go one more. Be a good time to have a mop, but I don't have a mop for a 45. Okay, now we got plenty on it now. Yeah, that's, that's clean. Okay, I like it. I'm gonna save that one. Okay. All right, it's wipe down time now for some of these parts. So we got this one good and clean. Let's wipe it down. And I'm going to set this barrel to the side and kind of let it dry. Go ahead and work on that. Chamber one more time, kind of soak up some of that. Now, if I was going to go, you know, store this and not shoot it, I would run a little bit of oil down that barrel after it dried. But it's not. It's going to, it's going to go right back out and shoot. So we don't need to do that. Okay, let's give everything else a kind of final wipe down, get it good and clean, and then we'll reassemble. Probably should hit that with a brush. Let's go ahead and brush some of these parts. That way we're getting in those nooks and crannies, getting everything good and clean. This is actually built fairly well. This is solid here, a solid piece of steel. The one in mine's hollow. Bushing. The side of it. The face of it. It's always powder or carbon on that on the face of it. Always. That's something I love to see. I love to see that blue wearing off. It just lets you know, hey, this thing's almost a shooter, you know? Getting good and broke in, getting those wear marks on it. Got a little bit of rust coming out on that one. That's all right. And we got a few little serrations here, so we're gonna hit that with a brush because that gets a lot of A lot of oil, get in that groove right there on the bottom. The way I'm talking, I almost feel like that painter on TV. The very pretty, uh, <laughs> very pretty uh, trees or whatever. So I can't remember his name. All right, same thing on this plunger. Let's get the face, it always gets carbon on it with the serrations on it. Just kind of run down it there and wipe it down. There's probably not a whole lot on the inside of that, but you can always take your t-shirt, just kind of run it down in there. Let's get it straight though. Until you bottom out. So if there's anything in there, just kind of wipe it clean. There wasn't very much in there. Okay. All right, let's get that slide back. Let's kind of go go through it with our same towel. We'll just kind of rub on the outside. That way it's not slipping in our hands. I'm going to take this towel, and this is where we're going to kind of wipe the back here where that 
firing pin is. I just take it and I fold that t-shirt. Just kind of rub it up just like that. So I'll wipe it. Get anything build up off of it. Where the head of the case sits, just kind of wipe up, kind of take your towel or t-shirt, run up in there, and just kind of slide it just like that. Now you want to be careful because remember you do have that extractor in there and you don't want to catch on it and bend it in any way. So just rub that towel in there, let's get all that crud out. Same thing here, you can use your toothbrush too. Take that toothbrush and kind of wrap it around through there and just kind of blend it in there. That kind of helps getting those grooves. And like I said, this is a fast cleaning. Just get it done, get it lubed up, get it back in the field, get to shooting. You got one of those safe queens. You probably want to watch another video. <laughs> so. Uh oh, there we go. Now let's go to a cleaner t-shirt. Take this t-shirt, kind of lay it across right there. Let's get in those serrations real good. bit of crud on there. Kind of fold that t-shirt, get in there, run it down. Fold it and rub it in there. It's getting good and clean. I mean, that looks pretty good. Now, this is the hard part here. This is where you'll definitely need a toothpick. Is where that ejector slides down right there. It's a very deep groove shot of that see how deep that is so we'll definitely need the, the toothpick to get that t-shirt down in there so we'll just take that run it down and that's usually where a lot of people neglect cleaning so we want to get in there real good all that carbon out. Of course, if you leave a little bit behind, I think it'll be okay. Get on that second groove there, it kind of steps. Okay. We are looking good. Fold our t-shirt, get in that barren surface right there. Pack it down in there, slide it back and forth. Get the little ends where that notch is for the safety. Lock the hammer back. Kind of wants to run out on you sometimes there. Okay, front, just kind of pull up on it. Back, everything out of it. And of course, you can take your t shirt, you can run it back up through there. Where a screwdriver helps. Kind of run it up. You can take it and pull it. And you can go both directions so that way we pull back down. Pull through that lower portion. So we're really drying this out really good now. Now it's time for some oil. I don't think we're going to use any grease on this yet. It's not quite broken enough. There's really, it's not a very loose 1911, so we're going to stick with some oil. You can use the oil of your choice. It's totally up to you. Set that 
the side. Just kind of wipe a plunger and everything down. Wipe off the countertop here. Get rid of any kind of residual solvent that's on the table. And you may want to use a cleaning mat. I don't. Okay. Let's just kind of dry everything up. And get ready for oil. I tell you what, that guide rod, man, that is a hunk of metal. I'm impressed. It's the first time I've disassembled one of these American Tacticals. Thing's heavy. Go around, get in those grooves. Use your fingernail, push down on that t-shirt. And I pull it through till it gets kind of stuck, and then I'll twist. Without getting any kind of groove in there. Okay. Let's see, there's a little groove right there. Almost like a little step. If you can see it right there. Okay. Okay, we're ready for oil. I think we got everything good and dry. Okay. All right, oiling. I like to put a light coat. 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 Thinking about coats right now. I like to put a light coat on the uh, barrel, the bushing, plunger, guide rod, and barrel. So I normally just take my oil, whatever oil I'm going to use. I've been trying this stuff out. I'm going to put some on my hands after I wipe my wipe my uh, gloves off. I just rub it on my fingers like that, and then I'll just kind of put a light coating just on the barrel there, around those lugs. Same thing with the plunger, just a light coating, bushing. You don't need a whole lot. You don't want this thing dripping. Because if you get it dripping out, it's going to drip all over your hands when you start shooting. We don't want that. Now I'm going to drop a little oil on the frame, on the rails. Uh, you don't want to get crazy with this stuff, but I'll put a little bit, just a drop right there on the ejector. I'll take some and I'll drop right down in the frame. Right there. A little bit right here, because it's going to move around. And I'll flip it over. Drop some right in there. And this will move, so we don't have to worry about it staying in that one spot, but once we work the action, it's going to move around. Then I'll get our slide, and I'll do the same thing. I'm going to drop some oil right inside there. Take it off the other side. Drop a little bit. Just like so. Alright. drop on my finger there. Just kind of rub right in there. It's easier just drop it on the bushing but or on the plunger and then slide it in. But right there where the bushing goes in, I just use my finger. And then I'll just kind of rub any kind of excess right in there. And then top of these slides. You can even put a drop there. I don't get too crazy right here because 
it's going to run out. This lubricant seems to be fairly fairly thick. So let's take my finger and kind of run down it right there. Okay, we should be in good shape. Okay, reassembly time. All right, take your barrel. Now when we reassemble, we'll have this barrel link right here. That barrel link needs to go forward and your bushing, or your guide rod, not your bushing, your guide rod has got a half moon on one side. Now that touches the barrel. That's why it's half moon. So it's gonna go just like so. That's why it's half moon. So this basically goes in there and that uh, link sits right there and then you have your spring and that's what's doing all the action. And this part here, your slide catch, actually is gonna fit through that link just like so. Of course, it's going to be on this side. So, if we were looking at this the correct way, that link would be just like that. And it's going to sit like so. And then you'll have your guide rod there and the spring on it. And this is what's going to move back. Okay? So, you're your barrel just tilts like that. Your barrel basically stays stationary. It moves just tilting. That's all it does. That's what that link does. Just moves a little bit. All right, so let's put this bad boy together. So we'll take our barrel, slide it right down the front. Basically, it's opposite of how we disassembled. Push it all the way to the rear, link down. Then I'll take my guide rod. I'll just lay it right on there. Take my spring, slide it through the front, kind of twist it a little bit. If you can't, just lift up on this guide rod, slide it on there just like so. Okay, so now we're cooking with Crisco. I'll take my bushing, slide my bushing in there. Camera about cut off. Slide my bushing in there until that catches, and then I want to turn it counterclockwise. Okay, she's not turning. Oh, spring's catching. Okay, turn it counterclockwise. So now that keeps our barrel position so it's not flopping around. Then I'll take the frame, take the frame, and I'm gonna keep it upside down. That way it keeps everything centered. And I'm just gonna slide her on. Just like so, you hear a click. All right, now we're lined up. And you want to look through this hole right here, and that's what your uh, slide stop is going to catch. Your link, your link's in there, and you want to make sure it's good and straight. So we're going to flip over, just like so. You can kind of move your, see if I can show that hole, just like that. And basically, we're going to slide this back again, because we have that indicator right there. We want to slide that indicator back. Some guns can be a little bit tighter than others until it's right above the square, just like so. Watch our link in there, make sure we're good and straight. Take it, may have to wiggle it a little bit. Now here, you wanna go straight down till you can't go no more. And then I take my thumb, I kinda of move it a little bit, and then I'll wiggle. Just like so, you'll hear that click, and then we should be able to, oh, we got moved a little bit. Hear that click, just push it right on in. Okay, now we're in there. So now we can slide that barrel back up. Put our safety on. Turn it upside down. We'll take our plunger. And we'll put a little bit of oil on that plunger. Well, more than what I thought. And that's going to lubricate the inside. That's a little excessive right there, guys. All right, we'll take our plunger. Slide it right over the top. Push down, take our bushing, turn it over. All right. Now we'll do a function check. Take your safety down. Works great. Let's go ahead and throw the mag in there. Yep, mag catches.
pan a whole lot smoother than what she was. Now from here, I'm just going to take my towel. I'm going to wipe down, put a little oil on the towel or my cloth and just get all around, not any terrible crazy oil because this is going to be in use. We don't want it slipping and sliding everywhere. And um, that is your basic breakdown and cleaning of a 1911. No sense in putting a whole lot of oil on it. Just those little spots I showed you. Clean it real good. And man, that is slick. That's what you want. All right, thanks for watching. Sorry it took almost an hour to do, but I hope it helps somebody. Give me some feedback, hit the like button, and let me know what you're using for clean and solvent. I've got some ordered I'm gonna try out, but I'm definitely looking for something else besides what I've been using. See you guys later.